recent changes at Nike to stay competitive in this ever-changing and evolving retail landscape. Just last week, Nike CEO Mark Parker announced he is cutting his paycheck by, get this, 71 percent this year, taking $13.9 million. Well, not really a small drop in the bucket, but if you compare that to what he brought in in 2016, it was more than $47.5 million. Now, the retailer also planning to lay off more than 1,000 employees as part of that 2% global workforce yep. cut, cut sneaker styles, and shift its e-commerce strategy by selling to Amazon or selling those products on Amazon. Joining us now to discuss all of this and more in the sneaker space is none other than Josh Luber, CEO of StockX. Josh, as always, we love having you on the show. Mark Parker taking this 70 plus percent pay cut. Is that what Nike needs at this point? Because if you take into account, Nike had a very strong second quarter earnings report. Yeah. Yeah. Is it what Nike needs? I don't know. It's a nice story. Mark Parker is still going to make $14 million. Um, sure, he made $48 million last year, and I'm sure the year after that, um, you know, in two years, his salary will go back up or will have whatever options. It's a nice story. I don't think it changes too much. All the other things you mentioned are a lot more relevant to Nike's performance. The deal with Amazon, uh, selling on Instagram, changes in workforce designed to focus more on e-com. Now, that's a lot more interesting and more relevant to Nike's performance, but it's certainly a good story when you hear that Mark Parker is going to take 71% lower salary. All right, well, then let's get over to the new kicks that you've got for us this week. Let's talk about the hot release, Adidas and Pharrell Williams, the Tennis HU collection. What's that all about? Sure, so um, Pharrell has been with Adidas for a while now, for a few years, and um, he's been wearing a few different shoes, but this is the first shoe that is his own signature shoe, right? And it's called the Adidas Pharrell HU or Human uh, Tennis. And it's this model right here, and uh, the HU in this uh, stands for a number of things. I'm actually gonna read Pharrell's statement on what HU means. He said, HU is short for human, human being, human race, humankind. But HU itself is also a reference to color. We all have a color, we all look different, we all speak different languages, but we're all connected. So um, this is right in line with, with Pharrell and, and, um, and with Adidas, and it's a very interesting shoe. Um, whereas some of the previous shoes that Pharrell wore, such as this one, which is the NMD H year human race, selling for as much as 1000 some as much as $15,000, his signature line is available for almost anyone to buy at a retail price of about $130. This is a good move by Adidas to make a Pharrell shoe available for just about anyone in lots of different colors, lots of different patterns, $130 Pharrell shoe with Adidas. I mean, is Pharrell and I guess the overall sneaker culture, is he really kind of the most important voice for reigniting Adidas to the masses? I mean, even outside of Kanye West, the Yeezys aren't, uh, the Yeezy boosts aren't readily available. That's a really good point, right? Like Kanye still carries an unbelievable amount of weight even when his shoes alone aren't available. This shoe right here is actually a, an Ultra Boost, which is one of Adidas's core running shoes. This Ultra Boost, this all white Ultra Boost, Kanye wore this before it came out and people were standing out and selling out this general release white shoe. This isn't Kanye's shoe, this is the shoe he was wearing. So Kanye's influence extends well beyond just his shoe, but from a commercial standpoint, there's certainly more shoes being sold with Pharrell's name attached. This is only reselling for about $5 more than the retail. At what point do you think you'll see this increase in resale value, or do you think there's not that much demand for this? Well, look, I, I think the way they do it is pretty smart, right? This one, the Pharrell Tennis, uh, is a pretty much available everywhere at retail, $130 on the secondary market. If it gets there, you know, basically the same. Whereas this version, the NMD Pharrell, this is what sells for $1,000. There's a, there's a purple colorway of this that sells for as much as $10,000 of this. So what they do is they keep these, the NMD version, very limited, and they make the tennis version widely available. So even if you don't want to spend $1,000, you can get a pair for $130. Josh, I just want to go back to Nike for a second. We did lead in talking about, of course, their turnaround strategy. When it comes to e-commerce, the company coming out just before their earnings report that they were going to be partnering up with Amazon. This is um, specifically an e-commerce platform that they have a long-standing issues with in terms of the um, fake products being sold, the fake Nike Gunner, products. Yeah. 
on their platform. But Nike also coming out saying that it was going to partner with Instagram. We don't fully know to what extent. Is this the right play in terms of their e-commerce push? Those two ends, Amazon and, and Instagram, cover very different goals. Right? So is it the right play? Both of these are the right thing to do is they become more relevant online. Amazon, there's a ton of Nike product that is sold on Amazon by other people. There's a ton of fake Nike products sold on Amazon by other people. So it's a right place to get in there and control their own brand there, even if it is perhaps the lower end of Nike product. Instagram, on the other hand, this is how they're gonna to continue to market to sneakerheads, continue to put out rare exclusive products, right? This, uh, the rare Pharrell NMD, Nike has shoes like this that sell for $1,000, $10,000, and by marketing it through social, making it available that way, they've been using Twitter that way, so it's a, a very uh, natural progression. They'll start to use Instagram that way as well. So the short answer is that these cover different areas and they're both the right thing to do. Now let's talk about the color specifically of the Adidas and the Pharrell collaboration with the burgundy package, the most expensive, the friends and family burgundy. Why is this color so coveted? Look, you're looking at asks as high as $15,000. Right, so uh, this is a pretty tried and true strategy across all brands, which is that there are some pairs that they release to the public in other colorways that they don't release. That you can only get, this one is called the friends and family pack. If you're friends or family with Pharrell, if he gave it to you, if someone of Adidas gave it to you. So this is so rare, it didn't even release. So the few pairs that have made its way out there, that's why those are selling for $15,000. And this is pretty common with a lot of shoes. You'll see a lot of these rare uh, player exclusive or friends and family pairs that never released. And those sell for a ton of money just because they're so rare. All right, very, very cool. I like that color a lot, um, so I, I get it. I wouldn't pay 15000 but I understand the I appeal of a certain color. Thanks so much, friend of the show, Josh Luber, CEO of StockX, live from Detroit. See you, see you soon. You. See you next week.